everyone, welcome to Access Church Online. We're so honored you're joining us. If we've never met, my name is Amanda, and it's so nice to spend this time with you today. In just a minute, our band will lead us in a few worship songs, and then we'll hear the answers to the questions that you asked about family and parenting from Pastor Jason and an amazing panel of people from inside of our church. It's going to be great. Today, you also have an opportunity to give. If you're a member at Access, you know that you can always give online at access.tv slash give or by texting an amount to the number 84321. I'm so pumped about this service and can't wait to get started. Let's join in with our band and worship. You love so great in all things I've seen a glimpse of your heart a billion years still I'll be singing how can I praise you enough how can I praise you enough you are the Lord of Shining all the stars in glory Your love is like the wildest ocean I know nothing else can pass Creation calls all to the Savior We are alive for you, praise In earth and sky one is higher Our God of wonders you reign Our God of wonders you reign You are the Lord Almighty I'll shine in all the stars in glory Your love is like the wild
Your love is like the wild is oats And now nothing else can You are our living hope, Jesus. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven. I spoke your name into the night And then through the darkness Your loving kindness It tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? And what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living hope sing hallelujah oh and hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my You're my living hope Cause then came the morning That sealed the promise Your buried body Began to breathe And out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me let's sing that again then came the morning then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body it began to breathe and out of the the one who said 
everyone, Pastor Jason here. I wanted to bring you a quick update about our plans to reopen our church for in-person services soon. Now first, let me be clear about one thing. The church never shut down. We just haven't been meeting in a physical building. The church is a movement of people, not a facility. I'm grateful that hundreds of families have continued to gather through our online services. This season hasn't stopped the way that we serve, give, and help those in need. In fact, I would argue it's only ramped up what we're doing to help others. Secondly, I need you to know this. No one, and I mean no one, wants to gather more than me. I miss you all so much. Liz and I want you to know how much we love you, miss you, but also our desire is to keep you and your family safe. So to do this, we're announcing a clear, strategic, and phased approach to reopening. Now, you know we currently meet at George Jenkins High School, and the Polk County School Board has asked that no renters use their facilities until the end of June. Our building will be ready this fall, so as we lead up to then, here is our plan. Phase one is all about getting our people meeting back together again. For this, we're asking you to consider doing two different things. Number one is access groups are starting back on June 14th. We're gonna offer in-person groups and online Zoom groups. If you're comfortable hosting people or going to someone's home, we would love for you to be a part of a group. If you're still uncomfortable, definitely join an online group. The second thing we'd love for you to consider is we want you to host online church watch parties. All that means is that you open your home, invite some friends over, and worship together with our online service. Now to get our whole church worshiping together, in the month of June, we're moving our online services to one service time at 10 a.m., then you can watch it on demand the rest of the day. You can get together with friends, have brunch, and worship together. That's phase one. Phase two is about getting our church together in larger groups. Later in the month of June, we'll be doing some incredible serving projects. These projects will allow you to serve alongside your church family, but at a safe distance and often outside. Then phase three, which is coming soon, is all about our reopening the doors to our in-person services. I'm gonna be honest with you, I can't wait. This should happen in early July. Now we're still several weeks out from this and the virus situation feels like it changes every day, but as we get closer to it, we'll lay out a very clear guideline about how we're going to reopen and meet, how we're gonna worship, and how we're gonna socially distance to keep you safe. Let's be clear, the crisis never defined our vision and direction. We're continuing to help people take the next step in their relationship with Jesus. Listen, we're so ready to get back together worshiping again, but we're going to take it slow for you. There is no risk to having patience. This is what it looks like to love others really well in this season. In the meantime, stick with us online and we are so excited to see you soon. Thank you, Pastor Jason, for the update on what is coming next at Access. We're all so excited to meet together again in person. And one of the ways we're beginning to get together is in Access groups. Here at Access, we know that we are better together. And that's why we gather in Access groups where we can get comfortable, share, invest, and grow. We want you to have a place where you can connect with others and grow together. That's why we're launching the summer semester of Access Groups. Like Pastor Jason mentioned, this six week semester is happening in person and continuing online. We're only two weeks away from our summer semester of Access Groups beginning. If you'd like to lead a group, head to access.tv groups and let us know what kind of group you'd like to lead. For instance, I'll be leading a couples group with my husband. While that's perfect for me, maybe you have a totally different type of group in mind. Whatever that is, let us know by signing up at access.tv groups. As we begin to gather more, we wanna find ways that we can help and reach out to our community. We're doing that in two different ways during the month of June. First, we'll be collecting items for VISTI throughout the entire month. VISTI works with elderly members of our community all year round and we will be collecting toiletries and cleaning items that they can deliver to Polk County residents that are unable to leave their homes. You can drop these items off at the Access offices Monday through Thursday between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. For a full list of items, you can visit access.tv info. The other way we will be helping others this month is by holding another single mother's car care. During this outreach, a group of skilled men from our church give free oil changes, diagnostics, and free car washes to single moms in our area. If you're a single mom or know of a single mom, signups for the Single Mother's Car Care are at access.tv slash info. We'll even treat them to free coffee at Concord while they wait. We're so excited to jump back in and start serving our community so well this summer. 
If you attend Access regularly, you know how big of a deal generosity is here. We love giving back to God in response to all that God has done for us and the many ways He has blessed us. Remember that when you give, you're helping people take the next step in their relationship with Jesus in our community and all around the world. There are three ways to give at Access Church. You can always give online at access.tv slash give, or you can use text to give. To do that, text any amount to the number 84321, and it will walk you through the secure steps. If you're used to giving by cash or check on Sunday mornings, you can mail your tithe and offering to Access Church offices at the address on the screen. Thank you so much for your incredible generosity. In just a minute, we're going to be wrapping up our Family Feud series with a question and answer panel all about family and parenting, all based on questions that you submitted this past week. If you have friends you think could benefit from tuning in and listening, now is the perfect time to let them know. You can share today's message with a friend by clicking the share button. You clicking that share button can make an enormous difference in someone's life. Parents, we know that this summer is different than any other summer. And our Access Kids wants to help make this the best summer ever. That's why we've put together an awesome summer experience for your family, and we're calling it Very Best Summer. This virtual VBS experience will help kids dive deeper into their faith by putting the focus on God and His amazing plan for us. Your preschoolers through preteens will have a blast as they discover how to trust in God. Very Best Summer begins June 15th, and I encourage you to sign up quickly. We have a number of VBS family kits available for pickup that will include everything you need to make this VBS a success. Very Best Summer is 100% free, and you can register your family right now at access.tv slash info. As a mom, I can't wait to see all the fun our Access Kids team has planned. Right now, let's join Pastor Jason and our team for our Family Feud Q&A. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Access Church. I am so excited that you joined us online today. We are in a series today called Family Feud, and for the last few weeks, we've been talking about what God's Word says about how we can family really well. Hope it's been helpful to you. And my hope today is that today, regardless of your stage or season of life, will be insanely practical and very helpful for you as we're in this unique quarantine season where we're all kind of huddled up in our homes. We want your family not to feud. In fact, our hope is that when this is all said and done, you'll leave with some tips that'll help you family even better. Now, to make this really practical, I had this idea. I want to invite some amazing guests who can kind of share from their experience at all different ages and stages of life. So let me introduce you to our panel today. Today is gonna to be really, really great. To my left, we have the most beautiful mom in the whole world. Everyone else is competing for second place. <laughs> this is my wife, Liz. We've been married for 15 years. We have three amazing kids and one rebellious dog. He needs to meet Jesus, <laughs> is what it is. Uh, to my left, we have Pastor Ida. She is our amazing children's pastor. She and her husband, Nate, have been married for, get this right, 16, 16. 16 years. They have four amazing kids and a pug, so pray for them as well. <laughs> to, to her left, we have Pastor Isaiah, the greatest youth pastor in the history of all youth pastors ever. Love him so much. He and his wife, Des, have been married for six years and have two kids. Their, their newest kid, can you say newest kid? It is this sweet, sweet little girl who they adopted just, just a short time ago. Amazing family. And then to their left are some of my heroes, Dr. Daniel and Amy McNaughton. Get this, they've been married for 38 years. They got married when they were five years old. <laughs> 38 years. And they have two married children and one grandchild. And I'm sure they will confirm this that grandchildren are God's reward for not killing your own children. <laughs> so really excited to have them here today. Now, before we jump into the conversation, you have submitted so many great questions. Before we jump into it, since we're talking about family and specifically kids, today is a special day for us. It's unique. We would rather have done this in person, but since we're joining you online, today is what we call Move Up Sunday. So I wanna hand it to our next gen pastors, pastors Ida and Isaiah, as they take it away. Absolutely. So fifth graders, if you're going into sixth grade, you are now welcome to Access Youth. And we're so excited to have you. Wednesday nights are a blast. You will love them. And so we welcome you to Access Youth. Yeah. And to all of our younger kids, fifth grade and below, you are moving up to your new classes, your new environments. And we just honor and appreciate every phase that these kids are in. It's amazing. And we love to pastor them. It's great. Absolutely. Yeah. So moving on up. Let's do it. Let's do it. Congratulations. You are older. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, Same. Let's yeah. say it. <laughs> 
let's do this, let's get to work. And I thought it would be fun to start with the lightning round. Now, for all the questions we have, you don't have to answer every question, but for the first three, everybody's got to answer very quickly. This is a lightning round, put you on the spot. Okay. Ready? We'll start here and we'll go this way. Question number one, what is your favorite part of parenting? Traditions. Traditions. Oh, again. Good. Yeah. Uh, seeing their joy, like experiencing it with them. The bond that we have together. Mm, I have to say, you are the rock star. You, you know, your parent, your kids love you as oh. the mom, and oh, there's nothing. Yeah. No one. You know, yeah. maybe your pug or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think your kids love you. Uh, I would say playing with my kids. I love to wrestle yeah. and just play sports and just all that kind of stuff. Mm. Wonderful. And none of you said bedtime, so one point. <laughs> okay, question number two, lightning round. Here it is. Ready? What is the hardest? part of being a parent? What is the hardest part of being a parent? Let's it's facing my own selfishness. Mm -hmm. So they bring that out and you go, oh man, I could be really selfish when things don't go my way. Yeah. Well, we talked about this before and that was also my answer. Yeah. So yeah, yeah feel the same. faced with your own lack and your own yeah. need for Jesus constantly. It's a beautiful thing and it's a hard thing. Yeah. I would say the lack of control I have over outside elements, outside noise, all of that. I can't control everything, so that's the hardest thing for me. I'd have to say change. You know, they, the kids, whether it's like nap time now is different, or, you know, for me, going all the way up till the second one leaving the house, that, that's the hardest thing is just getting on to the new normal change. The hardest day for me, or the diff most difficult thing in parenting was the day that my daughter when she was going into a phase where she didn't want to be hugged. Oh, oh. no. Jason's crying. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Oh. By dad. Oh. By, dad. Oh. by me. By dad. Yeah, by yeah. By me. Dad? Yeah. Oh, well. Now pray for me. I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning round question number three. Last one. If you could look back and sum up all of your current years of parenting, no matter if it's just a few or many, what would you do differently? Mm. I would not sweat the small stuff, mm -hmm. not get as upset as I did when there was a missed nap or things didn't go the right way or we didn't walk when I thought we should walk, things like that don't matter. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. um, when I had the chance to be the biggest critic, I would have instead been their biggest fan. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. I would have maybe traveled a little bit more before having kids, but it's all good, so <laughs> <laughs> no worries there. <laughs> I'm going with Liz on the not sweat the small stuff. I've been uh, rereading a journal that I kept for them all the way through for years. And I see that I was so stressed by my daughter mm -hmm. potty training. Yeah. And I thought, you know, just let it go. Just yeah. be relaxed. I was more with the second one. Yeah. They had pull-ups by then. Yeah. <laughs> so I just say, just relax on those sorts of things yeah. that you can't control. So mine's a little heavy, but what what I would do is I would not have taken a certain job mm -hmm. that would had required a lot of time away when wow. our kids are little. Mm -hmm. I would just simply not do it. It wasn't worth it. Wow, that's, that's good. good. That's, that's really good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Really it's, good. The, the beautiful lesson is you can always earn more money, but your time is your mm -hmm. most precious yeah. commodity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Okay. Well, let's get to some questions that you submitted, and I really do hope that these are going to be helpful to you. I'm going to just throw this out to the committee and see which maybe how this lands on you. Okay. I want you to brag on yourself for a little bit, <laughs> looking at yourself. We just said, what did you struggle with? But what do you feel like you did right? What's something you did right as a parent? I mean, I'm with Dr. McNaughton. I mean, I'm super hands-on and Nehemiah and I love to wrestle and things like that. So I think it's it's building that bond with us, mm -hmm. father and son. And then with Noel, same thing, that appropriate touch that you talked about last mm -hmm. week in your message. Mm -hmm. So building that even now, she's five months, but but just building that, four months, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but just building that in even now. Yeah. Like I mentioned, my favorite part of parenting, traditions. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I mess up a lot, but one thing we do is we celebrate hard. So yeah. we celebrate everything. Yeah. Like it's the end of a quarter, you got straight A's. Like whatever it is, there's always a chance for a milkshake night. There's always something fun. Let's put our cereal in like beach buckets today. Like I'm good at fun. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's interesting. We, we've been, it's, it's neat to see our kids um, grown. Uh, it helps you know that it, it's, it all worked out. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that, that uh, I think, and this, we, we had some friends and some family that helped us kind of set this up, but we actually had a system that helped them think about money and priorities. Mm -hmm. And now seeing the impact on their lives as young adults and seeing that they're handling their money well, mm -hmm. um, it, it, I'm glad we did that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. By the way, I should, I would say it's important to say 
that we we fully understand that we aren't uh, we, we aren't perfect parents. No. <laughs> so doing something right is good to say. Yeah, <laughs> you were going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say that um, just making that choice to stay home with the kids while they were young. I know mm-hmm. that everybody doesn't always have that choice uh, but it was something we had committed to before we were married yeah. and so right. I treasure those years yeah. because I feel like you're so influential yeah. early mm-hmm. on yeah. and it that makes the difference of making where your kids are like enjoyable to be with so yeah. I think that that would be something I think we did right yeah and that was a sacrifice if I can just dive in because um, you know we we definitely uh, were in a, an environment at the time where if you were um, if you were intelligent and if you had education, you should not stay home. Mm-hmm. She had a lot of pressure on her from her friends and other people to do that. But but she uh, she said, I, I want to invest. I want to be the primary investor in our mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. And so we took a massive cut in pay. We trimmed back our lives mm-hmm. because that was important. Yeah. And I'm so yeah. glad. It's, great choice. It's, so good. Mm-hmm. it's worth it. It's worth it. It's so good. I think that you'll look back at your life if you were able to do that and just look back with a heart full of gratitude. So great, great answers. Okay. Here's a very insanely practical question that is really, really challenging for some families. There's a lot of families that are blended families now. So it's not just necessarily the biological mom and dad together in the same home. So one of the questions had to do with discipline. Now, the Bible speaks a lot about discipline, but how should blended families handle discipline? Should the biological parent be the only one to discipline, or is it okay for the the new parent in the family to bring discipline? Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Well, I think um, kids are amazing at sniffing out weakness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. They know how to pit people against, you know, themselves. And so I think that, I mean, every family is going to have to work that out. We're not a blended family, but I think every system that you're in, so you're in school, you're wherever you are, mm-hmm. there's going to be an agreed upon, here's how life is yeah. going to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, parents need to be wise, but I think that everybody and the two parents should have the freedom, you know, to lead their kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, you have values that you're going to live out. And I think, you know, we all need a little nudge, even adults mm-hmm. from time to time. You know, it's, we're not really, this isn't really a value. Mm-hmm. And I'd say the biggest thing too, is just like, like you said, agree on that beforehand. Like don't make a decision in the moment. Well, she just disciplined, but now what do we do with it? Have those conversations. If you're a blended family, you can become an amazing mm-hmm. force for the kingdom, but you need to have discussed that beforehand and say, this is going to be what we do. We're all in agreement. We come into agreement about it and try to really keep open dialogue because that will avoid like a lot of unnecessary, I'd say, disagreements down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was going to say for disciplining any kind of family, consistency is key and not faltering and changing our mm-hmm. minds as parents mm-hmm. every other day yeah. because whether we're tired or we don't want to deal with it or what it is, but consistency goes a long way with kids. They can know what to expect. They can know the boundaries that they're going to push up against, but they're there and they're consistent. And that speaks security to children. It's good. So good. So good. All right. Next question. Here's a good one. Okay. So we're in this weird quarantine season, right? And so families are kind of stuck in home together. What can we do to, to grow closer to each other in this season? I'll rephrase the question this way. In 20 years, when we look back at this summer, what can we do so that our kids look back and say, that was the best summer ever? Yeah. yeah. I would say, and I'm talking to myself, like adults, we need to maybe put our phones away. Mm-hmm. I have a habit that when it's my work days here at this office, I'll leave my laptop here, my mm-hmm. work laptop, because if not, we're doing stuff online and I'll just end up on my laptop all the time mm-hmm. doing work because it's important and I love it. Um, so uh, setting those boundaries for ourselves and really just, Play. Just get on the floor with your kids. Play a game. Start a weekly movie night. Start a family night. Whatever it is for your family. Maybe you like to walk. Maybe you like to rollerblade. Maybe you like to plant tomatoes. Whatever it is, just do it together. (laughs) You know, it's going to look different for everybody. But for me, lots of that starts with it. For my husband, work is at work and home is at home. Mm -hmm. Um, It's easy now that it's all mixed together to blur Mm -hmm. our boundaries and forget where we're at and who we're with. So. I think for us, uh, Nehemiah is almost five years old, and so um, I figured, you know, this is the perfect time for him to learn how to ride a bike. Now, I know how to ride a bike. I've been riding bikes for yeah. my whole life, but, you know, he hasn't. And so we just said, hey, let's do something simple, learn how to ride a bike. Yeah. And so he will always look back and say, wow, during mm-hmm. this time, I learned how to ride my bike. And so yeah. uh, I think that's been for us just simple things like mm-hmm. that. I was going to say, say yes. 
Yes. Like say yes to the things you normally go, not today. Mm-hmm. You know, like Ella will come in and can we play Candyland? And I just like, it's like immediately I want to be like, no, not right now, but I'll be like, yes, let's play Candyland, you know, <laughs> or whatever it is. Like, can we use the easy bake oven? Like, that's a whole thing that you have to say. <laughs> oh, yes. There's time. And then, like, the work is not worth it. It's not worth it. Out, it's not worth <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm like, what are we going to do? Five people. But <laughs> she loves it. You know, so oh. say yes yeah. when they, to maybe things you wouldn't normally, because it's going to get busy again. Like yeah. this yeah. will, we will get busy again to yeah. where we're going. Okay. Sure. Let's fight for family time. But for now, say yes to yeah. things you maybe normally wouldn't say yes to. Yeah. So good. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I, can I brag on my wife for a second on this question? <laughs> she is the queen of intentionality. Mm-hmm. She plans stuff for our family. She always looks ahead in the calendar and finds breaks for us to get away, to do something fun. We found right when everything kind of shut down and there was nothing to do, we found an outdoor (laughs) zoo to drive through. So we literally stayed in our car. car. Who else finds that kind of stuff? (laughs) But I think the challenge is be intentional. You can make this season the best season ever if you're intentional with it. So I love that. Love it. Love it. Proud of you. Thanks. Next question, okay? And I'm gonna send this question down to the far end to our mm-hmm. wiser, not <laughs> not older, our <laughs> wiser. So, how does parenting change mm-hmm. in different seasons as your kids get older? Wow. Oh, you should okay, take this. I'll start. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I'll start because um, being a I was an elementary teacher, mm-hmm. and so I had that system down. I knew the rewards and consequences, yes. and kind of you know bingo systems and all that. The kids had tickets and you know, whatever behavior modification kind of for Mm -hmm. children. But then my daughter went to middle school. So by the the time she was fifth, sixth, seventh, it changed. And I had it, whoa, it wasn't, you know, you do this because I said so anymore. It's like, oh, you're having a lot of emotion and it's not just a, you know, point blank, yes or no. So um, I know that that was one thing that, uh, it was um, a adjustment for me, mm. learning to listen. Mm-hmm. Wow. I said collaborative. You don't feel like going to church tonight. Well, tell me, instead of like, we'll get in the car and go because we yeah. always go, you know, whatever. It was like, well, tell us what you're feeling and yeah. tell us more about that. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And what was really cool uh, during that time, Amy actually had, had transitioned from elementary school teaching to teaching at the college. Mm-hmm. And she was in the middle of getting a doctorate, actually. And, and our daughter just needed a lot of time to talk. Mm-hmm. And one day I remember, you know, she came and said, I think I'm going to stop doing my doctorate. Mm-hmm. Wow. And uh, so she actually took a, a, a break in the middle, took mm-hmm. a degree that means nothing, <laughs> that they'll let you do. And just because our daughter needed lots of time. Wow. Yeah. And it's like one of the best decisions that we ever made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. I was able to pick it up later. Yeah. You know, keep going later. But Ooh, go she girl. just still needed time. So yes. I think yeah. you, you think, oh, they're done and they're on to other things, but they weren't. They wow. still needed yeah. time. That's so good. So, wow. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, everybody's different when they go through change. Mm-hmm. And our, our son and our daughter are very different in how they mm-hmm. went through the change. And they, they all, they both changed radically. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think listening more and mm-hmm. just getting to know who they're becoming as an adult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, instead of just assuming I know you and this is what you're like, they, they actually do change yeah. and they go through these wow. like one month cycles of something. You wonder, is this going to be the adult version? <laughs> you know? yeah. And you're like, no, I'm just trying that out. And there's a lot mm-hmm. of trying out in, in that phase. And then you, it's really nice when they're about 17 and they settle down. Wow. Mm-hmm. But you, they need more time. They actually need more affection, too, in a yeah. way, during that phase. And I, I wasn't really prepared for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I had been involved in youth ministry and stuff, right. but I, had, I wasn't prepared as a, an adult mm-hmm. dad. Mm-hmm. What do my kids need? So, mm-hmm. But we had a ton of fun mm-hmm. when our kids were in high school, too. And I, we, st- we kept doing family night, yeah. yes. and our kids wanted it. Yes. We played games and stuff. We didn't like say, oh, you guys are too old now. You don't want this. They mm-hmm. would actually want to do yes. it. So we, all the way through. It's, yeah. We would often give them a choice. Do you want, you know, movie or game or they and almost always pick the game because yeah. it was yeah. the most relational. Yeah. You know, that kind yeah. of thing. So And they and would Seth even loved, invite their friends over too. I said and Seth yes. loves to win, so that's oh, why yeah. he, yeah. <laughs> he loves to win. <laughs> oh yeah. Every game. Can I say something? You said the word phase. And I know Pastor Isaiah and I are big on talking about phases in each life of a child. So you have a baby. You know, that's It goes like this, and I know you're like, I gotta shut up, I don't want to hear it, I'm not sleeping. (laughs) But like, these phases are important, and if you can become sort of an expert of your child in that distinct Mm -hmm. phase, 
you can understand more. You can have more empathy. You can say, oh my goodness, no wonder my teenager doesn't want to hug me right now. She's going through this yeah. thing. I think oftentimes we expect that they'll always be that cute little kindergarten mm, baby. So wow. when they push up against that, it's hard for us to celebrate yeah. it. It's hard for us to have joy. We've talked about this with our own kids that yeah. are very similar in age and how, but wait, we always did that together and now you don't. It's not so much that they're pushing against us. They're, they're changing. Yeah. They're in a new phase right. and we can either come at that and really buck against it mm. and make them comply. Mm -hmm. But I think as kids get older, what I'm learning, I'm not an expert. Mm. They are the experts on the panel. <laughs> but you sort of morph from I am the ultimate authority. I have to yeah. grab you when you run into traffic. I have to keep you right. safe. But now I have an almost 14 year old. That's my oldest, so I have not arrived. It's still an experiment. Please, Lord, be good to us. Um, but I'm more of a mentor. Like we do things side by side a lot more mm. now. There's a trust that's there that we've developed in those little years where it was, you do it my way because you have to, you don't know what your own way is yet. So I think appreciating phases and we are digging deep into that for your students at Access Church. Um, just appreciating and understanding what is happening in a child each distinct phase. I think it's so important, and I wish I would have known with my first kid. We often talk about the first children. I'm sorry, Aurora. <laughs> no? Yeah. I, I do want to say one more thing. I think it's important to understand what's going on with your kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, there's a uh, psychologist call it individuation, mm -hmm. and that means they're becoming... Yeah. Uh, they're becoming someone different from you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you understand that, it, it frees you up to say, okay, who do you want to become? Yes, mm -hmm. that's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. And so I coached more, asked mm -hmm. questions yes. rather than telling that's more. That's good. That's, that's so, so good. good. Mm -hmm. that's so, so good. Man, love this. I do too. Uh, parents, I hope that you take away from this, even just at, if your kids are at Access Church, I hope that you understand that our heart is yeah. to partner with you in this because yes. sure. the phases come and they go. I said this a couple of weeks ago, but the real truth is that the days feel long, but the years are short. Yes. Yeah. And we want to help you work through every phase as best we possibly can. All right, next question, and this is a fun one. <laughs> to the parent who feels like they're struggling right now. <laughs> now let, me, let me set this up by saying um, the, the reality of parenting is it's one of the hottest topics, meaning mm -hmm. like sometimes you offer someone advice and you feel like you stepped on a land. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's like, we're the least receptive to it, but the truth is all of us can use some help. Yeah. What piece of advice would you give to the mom or dad who feels like they're struggling to survive right now? The one that I love is one you passed on to me was like, when in doubt, zoom out. Yes. So I'm upset right now. Does this matter? Mm -hmm. Is this going to matter tomorrow? Is this going to matter five days from now? Is this going to matter five weeks from now? Five months, five years? Most of the time, the answer is a resounding no. <laughs> you know, I'm upset because your room looks like a complete tornado ran through it. And like that makes me feel no peace in my home. <laughs> but you're happy. And like to you, it doesn't matter. And when you leave my house one day, it doesn't matter if your room was clean or messy. And so when in doubt, zoom out, like try to look at it from above. I know that's hard in the moment. I get that completely. But when in doubt, zoom out, say, does this matter? Like, why am I wasting energy on this? instead of making this a moment of anger or of disturbance, like this can just be a learning moment. So it's so good. Yeah, and I, I'd add from the youth pastor perspective, you know, I can see the impact that you're making mm -hmm. in your student, even though you may think he or she's not listening and, and they won't pay attention or yeah. whatever, I can see it. And so you may be down, but you're not out. So keep going, keep good. pushing because I can see that and, and it's reflected. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard a student say, well, my mom says this or my dad says this. Right. You may not know that they paid attention, yeah. but they are and they're voicing it to other people. So it may not come back to you. Maybe later it will, but maybe never. But just know that you may be down now, but you're not out. And they see that. They see that uh, that mentor in you and they see that, that coach in you, all that, that role model. They see it. I think as you're trying to always help them get their wings so they can fly, just um, recognize that those phases that they're going through. Um, I, I always kept in mind, I want to enjoy this. I want to enjoy this because it's not going to be there. And yes. I don't want to get to the end of my life and go, oh, I didn't enjoy that. And I can, I'm referencing something again, those, those notebooks that I kept record wow. of everything. That's and I look back and I think I have kept record of it. Yeah. And I am loving, I said to Daniel, it's like, it's like the notebook, you know, mm -hmm. you remember the movie, The Notebook? Yes. I said, you got to read this to me when <laughs> I can't remember anything yeah. because just to, just to reread it is so fun to say, wow. I made the most of that time. Even yeah. though yes. it was hard at times, mm -hmm. I made the most and I enjoyed each phase. So that's what mm -hmm. I would say. Enjoy mm -hmm. each it's stay, it's stage. So mm -hmm. it's so good. Good. I'd say prize connection above everything else. And that maybe it's just the same as Zoom Out. Yeah. The word in our home use a lot is connection. So like 
even sometimes over compliance, even I know people, we all parent differently, but like I can demand obedience from you or I can connect with you in this moment. Mm -hmm. So I, I have learned the hard way four kids in and I'm st learning every single day to prize connection above my own way, to prize connection over my own standards, to prize connection with the heart of the person that's in front of me, to really love that child mm -hmm. in yeah. that phase in front of me above all else. So connection is key. Mm. Great responses, and we somehow worked a reference to the movie The Notebook. <laughs> <laughs> crying, I'm crying. I, I, I remember yeah. watching that with Liz for the first time, and her <laughs> kneeling beside me, laying on the couch. You can't die. Please don't ever. die. <laughs> and non-emotional me was like, okay. That's <laughs> oh, <laughs> terrible. Movie. That's it. okay. Two more questions, and then we're done. Question. Next question is this: um, What are you currently doing, and what did you do to prepare your children to be adults? Ooh, that's good. I mean, I can go. go we, I'm not a pro again, but we are big on like, you are part of the family. Like we are your parents, yes, but we take our kids to hard places. They do mm -hmm. missions work with us. They see the real world with us. They mm -hmm. have hard conversations with us. Mm -hmm. They know how the world works. I mean, from major things like traveling and talking about hard topics that all in the current events right now, mm -hmm. we sit at the table and we flesh it out to simple things like learning how to save your money and learning how mm. to spend your money or letting them start little side hustles, side businesses and paying mm. back the loan to mom and dad. Mm. Just valuing their input and treating them like people creating God's mm. image. Like they're these amazing people that will grow up to be amazing adults and mm. we just let them do life with us. Like they do everything with us. I always say it's not, I'm not just like a homeschool mom and a children's pastor and a mom. It's like one beautiful, messy, sort of chaotic, wonderful mm. life. We do it all together and we're all in. And they, they have a voice in the conversation. They have a voice mm. in what's happening in, in our little world. And they get to see and experience mm. and taste and travel and see the world at large. They know the whole world is not just Lakeland. It's much bigger. Yeah. It's, I think it's setting them up for a really fun life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we were thinking pretty much all the way through um, that we're just caretakers. Mm -hmm. And so what do you want your kid to be like uh, when they're 18? So we were actually preparing our kids, and I had this conversation with when, when they were 18, this is a hard conversation, but they graduated high school, and the day they're going to college, I said, okay, I want you to know I release you. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that your decisions from here on out are your decisions, mm -hmm. and I want you to know that um, I may not always agree, but mm -hmm. uh, but you're, you're now uh, on your own. Mm -hmm. And if you need a place to eat, you can always come home, you, you, I'll always be on your side, but you're an adult. And I made, uh, we drew a line there. And so mm -hmm. I, I lived uh, for those 18 years for our kids. Like, what do I want you to be able to do mm -hmm. at 18? And so there's all kinds of stuff with finances and, mm -hmm. and taking care of their body and understanding who they were. We had, they got Myers-Briggs probably more than any kid <laughs> on the planet. You know, uh, I discovered it when they were little. It was awful. <laughs> but there's all kinds of things that we, and it was always thinking, what's the outcome? Mm -hmm. You know, at 18, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a really sober day mm -hmm. when you say that. We both cry. We both hug each other. They both, they still come home and they reference it like it's this moment. It's almost like, do you still love me? Of course mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. But so we kept that in mind. And so you think about all the areas and we just tried to sow into them. Yeah. And everywhere we went, we tried to, uh, Deuteronomy 6 says that, you know, talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk yeah. along the road, you lie down and get up. And we did. Mm -hmm. And wow. you just do the best you can. And I think it's really important to remember that God gave your kids you as the parent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can't punt because things aren't going well. You have to say, no, I'm here. Uh, on a mission from God <laughs> and I can't stop just because I don't know what I'm doing yeah. right now you just wow. pray when you don't know that God I don't how do you want to raise this kid you know but they're not mine it's so good it's so good and as a dad I just get emotional thinking about having that mm. conversation but we also know the, the role of parent is to raise your kid to release them yeah. to yeah. send them into the world and I just think about how empowering it would be to be on the receiving end of that conversation to know you've done everything you can mm -hmm. as their parent, but now you're setting them free to live the destiny that God's called them to. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay, last question, and then we're done. And this is really the heart of everything. What can we as parents do to help our kids grow spiritually? Mm -hmm. 
I'll dive in here. We, we, we did some really fun things. Uh, but uh, we heard from somebody that I think it's age four mm-hmm. that you can memorize better than any time in your wow. entire life. So at about three, <laughs> we started doing scripture memory together Aww. as a family. So before I would leave in the morning, we would take like a chapter, like the love chapter or Psalm 23 or mm-hmm. so on and so on. We have a bunch of them. And we would, we would all say it out loud. And we both usually knew them at the beginning. But then as time went on, you know, we had to find some new stuff. But if, when we all got it word for word, then we would go like for ice cream or yes. celebrate or something like that. that. And that was a that was a impacting thing on yep. their lives, I think. All right, so we <laughs> this sounds weird, but we paid our kids to read the Bible. <laughs> okay, so my brother, <laughs> my brother gave his kids a hundred dollars to read the Bible. I would probably do two hundred now. The whole Bible. Yeah, and but here's how it goes: you get you if you did it for two hundred, you would get for every book that you read, it's two it's two dollars. Mm-hmm. And when you get to the last one, you make up the rest to the 200 or whatever it is. We did it for $100. So on the last book. So you love books like Obadiah because it's one page. Yeah. So, but here's the deal. When, when they would say, hey, I finished Obadiah, I get to ask one question. It's good. And if they can't answer, they have to go find it. Ooh. And so it was a little bit of accountability. And, all, and both of our kids, it took about two years for them to read through the Bible. I was going to say um, love. Mm-hmm. Just pure and simple if my kids can understand now the love of a parent, how much less of a struggle when they grow to understand the love of a God that they never have to impress, right. that they never have to perform for, that they never have to strive for. I mean, I have the best parents in the world and I still struggle with sometimes feeling like I have to earn God's love. I mean, truthfully, even as mid thirties, um, so, <laughs> but if I, if my kids can know that your love, my love is unconditional, that they have a place to land, that if they fail, they can come home for hugs because they tried, Mm -hmm. then I am setting them up spiritually to know the love of a father that is Mm -hmm. everlasting, that is not based on what I could do. Grace is a freely given gift. If they can get that now, and if my love can be even a glimpse into the father's heart, I've done enough. So good. Yes. Uh, Can I just add one thing? I was just going to say that, uh, so Nehemiah has... His name comes from the Bible. And so uh, lately he's been, and this is crazy, he goes on YouTube and he knows how to type his name now. And so the audio Bible comes up and it says the book of Nehemiah, chapter oh. one, you know. And so he's like, now he's interested because there's a biblical connection with his name. And so now I'm kind of breaking down that story. So I guess I would say if, you're, um, if your child has um, a name that has biblical connection, maybe start there. Something that's oh, kind of easy to just connect the dots. And so obviously, can I break down the whole book for him right now at four years old? No, but I can begin that process. And so if there's a biblical connection or if their name is is found in the Bible, maybe start there and just start that building that relationship there. Great answers. I I just think that raising your kids spiritually is one of the primary roles of the parents and your children's spiritual well-being is primarily your responsibility. You need to know that. So like, I love that you're partnered with our church. If you come every single Sunday, we would get one hour of your kids' time out of 168 hours wow. in a week. And yeah. so we have to partner with you. Um, here's what I'm going to ask to close. Would you mind, Dr. McNaughton, would you mind praying for all the parents who are watching today and just pray for God's blessing over them, the way they're parenting, their decisions, and for their family? Sure. Heavenly Father, thank you for the calling to be a parent. And Lord, you're... You're so clear about it in Scripture that um, that you are with um, us. You're you're our parent, and you've modeled for us uh, amazing parenting. And Lord, we have all failed, uh, but Lord, we come to you and we thank you for your amazing grace, and we thank you for the precious lives uh, that you have given to us to steward for this season. And Lord, I pray for blessing and strength and wisdom and courage. Lord, to be the parents that you've called us to be, Lord, help every parent to embrace that and to look to you and to, to gain what they need from you, Lord, and not, not from the world, but from you, so that we can uh, cast uh, or, or shoot the arrows of, uh, that you have, yeah. mm-hmm. you have put in our, in our, in our quiver, uh, mm-hmm. the direction that they were intended to go mm-hmm. for your purposes and your kingdom, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you guys so much, all of you, for your input and help. 
My hope is that today has been insanely practical and super helpful to all of you. And listen, this is just the beginning of a conversation. We're here for you as your church, as your pastors, as your children's and youth pastors. We just want to help you be the best you can be. So thank you for joining us today. I hope it's been helpful. We pray all of God's blessing on you. God bless you. That was amazing. There's so much from that discussion that I'm going to take with me into my own family. I hope this series has been beneficial to you and your family. Remember, if you want to lead an access group, serve in, or sign up for single mother's car care, donate to those in need with VISTI, or sign up for VBS, access.tv slash info is the site for you. There are links there for everything that you may need. It's so good being with you. I'm Amanda, and thanks for letting me spend this time with you today. God bless you.